Hello, lovely sunny January day, too good to spend it indoors. So I'm going to shoot a couple of videos. First one, we get Cranky. Cranky's in question, and for MS362 stills. And there are nine on this little workmate here, on this bench. And all but one are completely dead, and that other one's got issues. Now if you know how much these saws cost, you can do the maths and work out how much this may be costing the, uh, the firm who owns all these. And the damage is all of one cause, and I'll take you through that and explain that it can be avoided to a large extent with a bit more maintenance than is taught on a standard NPTC course. Okay, this is a crank straight out of a saw. I took this out last week. This left hand end is where the generator sits, which is this jobby. And on the right hand end, outboard of this bearing and outboard of the crank cases, we have the clutch, which spins on that way, undoes that way, and expands against the clutch drum here. The clutch drum sits this way around, that's the sprocket, and that's the retaining washer. And on the end here, if we can get it without getting in the light, we have an E-clip. So-called E-clip, because it's kind of an E-shape. It's a kind of circlip. And that's partly retained by this groove here. Stops it flying out under stress or under shock loads. And it sits in this groove here. More about that later. The issue is that there is not enough lubrication that gets to this bearing in here. Let's take it apart and show you the bearing. It takes itself apart. And that is a clutch bearing. And you can just about see, hopefully, I'm shooting with a GoPro, so it's got no zoom function or macro function. That these rollers here in this nylon cage are discoloured. That's because they've been hot. And they also should be nice and shiny as they are when they're new. And they're slightly dull matte finish. That's because they're slightly worn because they've been dry, starved of lubrication. The only lubrication that can get in here is um, hit and miss lubrication for the chain oil. Now if you're cutting seasoned timber, if you're cutting logs, and you're doing that hot and heavy all day, or you're cutting um, with a blunt chain, you tend to produce a lot of dust, which soaks up any lubrication that's available for this bearing, and it gets starved. This bearing, or this clutch, is from an MS201T, which is a top handle saw, a tree surgeon saw, which therefore tends to get most used in live, i.e. green, timber. So if it's kept sharp, and hopefully a person of the standing of a tree surgeon should be able to manage that, it uh, gets enough lubrication and these last quite a long time. This is the bearing. It's got more and smaller rollers. And if you look in here, let's see if we can prop this up. You can just about see the sunlight in there, and you can see this is all smooth and clean and shiny. Let's zoom in and out and see if we can focus. And if you look on this, you've got wear from the clutch from the, from the clutch, on the clutch drum from the chain brake, sorry, and you can see this has done a fair amount of work, although this is by no means worn out. So this is by no means a new sprocket. And as you look at this one, which is straight off an MS362, you should be able to see where the screwdriver is, that the surface of the bearing has started to spool off, and these bits of metal flake away, get caught in the bearing, and they increase the wear. And this spalling is partly because it's got hot, partly because of lack of lubrication, and you're also missing pieces from this area here. You hear it's slightly rough, and you've got wear here, where it impacts the end of the crank, just here. 
this gets extreme it starts to rattle and there's videos online which show you the uh, the rattliness of the clutch that it can get and then you get wear on this bearing surface of the crank this is part of the crank this can't be replaced unless you replace the whole crank which is a major job and you see on this one this one's particularly bad you've got wasting here you're actually missing quite a lot of material off the surface of the crank zoom in and out and then the whole thing has started to rock like this and that puts pressure on the e-clip which is supposed to sit in this groove as we saw earlier this groove is supposed to have sharp sides and be fairly narrow this one has worn away to such an extent the e-clip's gone walkabout and then the clutch drum carrying its sprocket and the chain under load has made a break for freedom out the side of the saw that one was completely smashed and I threw it away but this is a less extreme example and you can see here was a hole in the case it's taken out this buffer it's cracked that rear buffer locating pin which is only uh, magnesium alloy as is the case and there's also a crack here so this has done its job and it stopped anybody getting injured but this obviously stopped that saw being used on the job and that saw is now dead because it's taken the crank out as we can see here a little reminder of this crank this is what that circlip groove that e-clip groove should look like nice and crisply defined and you see on this one this has been cleaned up with thousand grit wet and dry you can use emery I prefer wet and dry because it sticks to the paper better and the whole thing's been spun in a lathe to do that between and on this end you can just see that, that uh, nut that's well started but it's at a funny angle so you've got a bend in the crank just here this was dismantled in a bit of a hurry and someone's actually bent the end of the crank so this has got other issues so the cure for this is to actually remove the e-clip every week when your saw is under full time use remove the bearing examine the end of the crank to see if there's any issue clean it and then put a bit of grease on here and a bit of grease on the bearing replace the uh, clutch drum and the sprocket and then put it back into use but if it gets to this stage to this state then the saw should be taken out of use thank you very much and I hope that's been useful.